Welcome to this daily service. We need the Lord. So whether this is the beginning, the middle or the end of your day, thank you for joining us as we look to him. Let's say together these words from Isaiah chapter 40. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This week we're reading John's account of Jesus' resurrection. And in our story today, Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. In difficult days, we need hope. That's why on the WhatsApp group for my street, we've been talking about having a celebration when all of this is over. A small party, something to look forward to. That's why the government reminds us of the figures going up and down and speaks about what the summer might look like. But we need a bigger hope than that. Hope is like oxygen when we're struggling to breathe. It's like light when we're groping in the dark. Hope gives us strength when we're feeling tired courage when we suffer, joy when we're feeling sad. Peter was one of those disciples in that locked room. He was afraid, he was hopeless, and then the living Jesus appeared. And some years later, Peter wrote of hope in his first letter. So let's read from chapter one and verse three. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A living hope. That's what we have today. It's the hope of life. Life in a renewed world. A world so full of life it will not perish. There'll be no death. And it'll not spoil. There'll be no decay or rot. And it'll not fade. It'll not lose its vitality or its beauty. It's a living hope. It's more than simply a better life than we have now, or that we might have one day, or the life of our dreams. It's the best life we were made for. And yet we're cynical. What if it disappoints us? What makes this hope different from any other? Can we believe it? What if it's fake news? Peter calls it a living hope because it's based on a living saviour. A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That first Easter changed everything. God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. The tomb is empty. Jesus has defeated sin and death and the devil. He is the living saviour, and because he lives, we too are alive. My house is full of books, but one of my favourites is my baby book. It's got the facts and figures and photos from my early years. It tells how I was born at 8.33 on a Tuesday evening on a particular day and date and year. We all have birthdays. 
but Christians have another birthday. In his great mercy, God has given us new birth into a living hope. We've been born again, not into a world like this one that will perish, spoil and fade, but into a new world, a new creation, a new life, a living hope. And this is a gift from God. It's received, not achieved. We receive it not by passing an exam or paying some money or typing in a password. It doesn't depend on who we are or what we've done. All of this is because of God's great mercy. Praise God. In these difficult days, we need hope. And praise God, we have a living hope. Let's proclaim this living hope by affirming our faith using these words from 1 Peter chapter 1. We believe in God the Father, by whose great mercy we have been born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We believe in God the Son, who died for our sin and rose again for our justification. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Merciful God, we pray for the media in our country and throughout the world. Thank you for the technology that enables us to be connected with so many people and places. Please direct those who speak where many listen, those who write what many read, those who influence what many see, that they may do their part in promoting truth, peace and justice. Strengthen them to speak out against all that is evil and to celebrate the good, working with honesty, integrity and wisdom for the good order of society. And loving Lord, we pray for ourselves as consumers of media. Help us find the most helpful information to equip us to be good neighbours. Help us to be discerning in what we read and see and to engage critically. Help us to maintain appropriate boundaries and to help others who are struggling to do so. Please keep us from anxiety and panic. In Jesus' name, Amen. And let's conclude our prayers by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing of this living hope with our song for today.
As you go, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.